This coming week, we celebrate a number of significant events. Monday, January the 19th, is the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the hero of my youth. He was assassinated in April 1968 when I was 19 years old. I cried for days. Because of his life, I spent the next two summers living with inner city black youth, working in a government program called Upward Bound. On Sunday, January the 18th through the 25th, we also celebrate the Sanctity of Human Life Week. We remember that nearly 50 million babies have been aborted in America in the past 40 years, of which I had two. I've been forgiven, but those events stand as the two lowest points of my life. If I had to do it again, I would stand up for the lives of my children and not abort them because they seemed inconvenient. When Dr. King was in the Birmingham, Alabama jail, he wrote a letter on April 16, 1963. It was an heroic appeal for courage under fire. He said this, Whenever the early Christians entered a town, the power structures got disturbed and immediately sought to convict them for being disturbers of the peace and outside agitators. But they went on with the conviction that they were a colony of heaven and had to obey God rather than man. They were small in number, but big in commitment. They were too God intoxicated to be astronomically intimidated. They brought an end to such ancient evils as infanticide and gladiatorial contests. This infanticide, the wholesale termination of the lives of millions of babies, is the greatest reproach in our day. On January the 1st of this year, Bay Area African American pastor Walter B. Howe II wrote, the silence in the black American church regarding the evil of abortion is killing us. The numbers reflecting the impact of abortion in the black American community are horrifying. From 1882 until 1968, 3,446 black Americans were lynched here in the U.S. Today, that number is surpassed in just 2.8 days by abortion in the black community. The U.S. Census report of 2006 notes that black Americans need 2.1 live births to replace themselves. At this point, black Americans are currently below the replacement level at 1.9. This means black Americans are no longer replacing themselves because there are more deaths than live births. Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King says, the killing of a quarter of the black population of the U.S. has not been from lynch mobs over childhood days, but from abortionists who plant their killing centers in minority neighborhoods and prey upon women who think they have no hope. Dr. King states, the great irony is that abortion has done what the Klan only dreamed of. This week, we also celebrate the inauguration of the first African-American president. It is an incredible testament of the extraordinary journey of African-Americans. I have cried tears of joy when I consider this marvelous event. May we fervently pray for our new president, Barack Obama, and may we simultaneously ask God to reawaken our national conscience. May we have the courage, conviction, and insight to acknowledge when life begins and that all human life is precious. The Bible challenges us to open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Proverbs 31 verse 8. I'd like to ask all of you in this room to please stand now as we pray fervently for our nation at this significant time.